Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to another interview on Wisdom from North. I'm Janneke, and if you're new to my channel, welcome here. Here you'll receive inspiring interviews with amazing thought leaders and transformational teachers of today, as well as my own video blogs. Today, you're going to meet a world champion in cross-country skiing who turned a spiritual teacher. Trude Dupendal is passionate about bringing harmony to the world by reclaiming the feminine and balancing it with the masculine. In her work, she helps people bridge their physical world as well as their spiritual world. She's also one of our masterclass teachers in Wisdom from North membership, where she's teaching the class how to access the divine feminine force and create a balanced life. Now, let's meet Trude. <music> Hello, Trude. A warm welcome. How are you doing today? Hello, Janneke. Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you. I am really grateful and excited for your masterclass in the membership, how to access the divine feminine force and create a balanced life. And your past is all about being a world champion in cross-country skiing. You have very many medals. Can you first share how many medals you actually have? <laughs> Well, it's nine medals from international championships, the world championships and three Olympic silver medals. Right. That's pretty impressive. And what is interesting, I find, is that you were really connected within when you were a cross-country skier. Uh, you were in the, uh, the nature. You, were, uh, you said on your website that you were really in connection with a divine feminine force. And then when you stopped skiing, you sort of went into the everyday life where it was more masculine-oriented. And now you needed to like ask yourself questions and like, what is a woman? How am I supposed to behave? And you sort of got out of balance and today it seems like your passion is to help people find that balance so can you share a little bit about uh just short like this journey this transition from being this uh, world skier or world champion to becoming a spiritual teacher and doing what you're doing today yeah well i guess in in my early years then um in the 20s i i uh, had opportunity to grow into keeping the strong connection with myself as I grew into with the national team of Norway, spending 16 years with them until I was 32 when I stopped skiing. So I, I got to see how I got to experience what is it to live a truly inner balanced life, a balanced life, which you have to do in order to perform your very, very best physically, mentally, emotionally. And uh, a lot of things happened during that period, especially after I decided that I wanted to become a world champion. And two years later, I was. Um, all the experiences, what went on then, it was like I was in it. I experienced it. A lot of it I didn't understand uh, what was going on with the energies that was activated and so on. And yes, I went into that life, the normal life. And that's, I thought, well, my previous life is finished. Now it's this. And that was the ordinary life. Running fast and doing all stuff and being this woman uh, who, yeah, what the woman is supposed to do and be. And I really lost myself. So for like, now it's 23 years since I stopped skiing. So uh, I went into family and kids and a lot of good stuff, but also a lot of stuff driving and almost hitting the wall a couple of times, losing myself. And I had to kind of become conscious. So that was the years that I, I had to get the learning myself. How do I come back to this balance that I was so deeply in? And, you know, that's, that's the beauty of life. It's your best teacher. And what I, part of my, one of my best treats, I guess, is that I'm, very eager to learn and evolve and take the lesson. Because I early on in my life heard from an uh, auntie of mine, she said, if you don't get the lesson, if you don't take the lesson the first time, life will send a more rough lesson to you the next time. And it's going to come. And I was like, hmm. I remember I was really young when she told me this. And I was like, hmm, it's about to get it. <laughs> and, and 
so I had to learn a lot of stuff during those years after I stopped skiing and had my family and so. And uh, I guess I was finally through it. And for each step and each learning, I have, um, I have myself, I have been more activated. The DNA, DNA activations is going on. Um, more and more connected with the energetic world has been an um, um, ever-growing part of my life. And uh, so here I am today, consciously sharing um, what is true inner balance really about, balancing the feminine and masculine forces within us, and how we can use our co-creational, divine co-creational power in this world of consciousness and energies. I'm really passionate about, you know, a soul purpose and that we all have a purpose that we can wake up to. And it seems like you're definitely on purpose. And it seems like these activations that were happening, they sort of prepared you for the work you're doing today. And you said that you're writing a book now uh, in Norwegian, it's probably coming out in English as well, because there's so many stories. There's so many uh, experiences, spiritual experiences that started happening uh, while you were skiing, can you share perhaps a few of them or, or what was going on and how sort of you reacted and responded to that? Because uh, from what I know, uh, you weren't that familiar with the energy world uh, when you were younger. No, you know, when being younger, I think life is more about just experiencing life and, and that's the way you learn. And um, yeah, early 90s I would be in training camps and you know it's training in the morning and resting in between the trainings and then there's another lap in the evening and it's so the day goes um, and often when um, relaxing half sleeping relaxing between those training legs I, I will have different I don't know if I even at that time would call it energy experiences it was things going on in my body sometimes in my head it could be like uh, i could hear like a <sighs> stronger and stronger and filling my head and then i would start to have i would say now uh energy would start entering my body moving in my body also, and i <laughs> I had no clue what was going on. I would ask the other people, on my teammates, do you ever experience, do you ever hear, do you ever? Nope, they never did. So uh, it, it has been a journey, like uh, discovering what was really going on. And what I realized is, of course, <clears throat> I was getting activated on my energetic systems, um, which comes from DNA activations and other stuff. And... Uh, this happens when it happens. Uh, it's what, do mean, a, what do you mean by that? It happens when it happens. Well, in a way, you could say <clears throat> concerning astrology, you have a birth um, print, right? Where all the planets were. And if you go into galactic astrology, you discover... A lot. I mean, astrology is like from the magazines and then more, more sophisticated, of course. So you have a setup from birth that during your life, you will be activated on certain um, um, skills and certain parts of you will be activated. And it doesn't happen before it happened because there is like also a scheme in this. And so that is a part of it. Uh, and um, so I haven't consciously asked for it all the time because it just happened, which I realized the recent years, it's because things have been set in place. That's one part of it. And the other part of it, to ex have experience of evolution like this is also about wanting to change, asking for change, being willing to change. That is really the first part of it. Because if you say, oh, my life is good, I'll just keep on going. First of all, you won't get the messages that is sent to you that there's new opportunities here. Or, Look there, there's a person to connect with. Then you would really get something new, nudgy things. You know, you're too busy to hear it. 
But if you are willing to to evolve and and it's like I want something else for my life. I I want my life to to move in better flow, more ease. This is a struggle. Does it have to be like this? You know, if you start asking those questions, those are questions from your soul that is calling for you. Hey, there's something else waiting for you. <laughs> so, you know, then things will start to roll for you too. Yeah, I find that interesting because you said that um, uh, in between our Norwegian and English interview that we need the will. We need actually to use willpower to evolve, to be heard. Uh, and I was curious, do you mean to be heard by spirit? Uh, because that is actually my experience too, is that when I practice, when I give energy to the practices and uh, by will, so I show up for my soul and I do the soul work, then things starts to happen. But it doesn't happen when I just go along with my everyday life and I forget about practicing or giving my inner world attention yeah it's i i so agree with you that is a very important part of it to to be to commit to yourself actually for the life changes you want to do it's like being an athlete you have to do the training and a muscle doesn't get stronger (laughs) your technique doesn't get better if you don't work on it but there's one important thing to add on to that and Yes, the willpower is important, but uh, that is a masculine force. And what is really important is that before the masculine force is set in motion for whatever you want to do, it's to come from the feminine force. And that is, um, so before you say, I want to do things, it's like the longing of the heart your desire to live in another way, it's to connect with your heart first and to feel this, I don't wanna live this struggling life. There there is something else here. Um, I see see some people around, it's more joy, it's more lightness. Yes, you know, we can be inspired by others and that's when we come from the heart. And, And then you can add, I really want changes in my life. That's when the masculine willpower is beautiful, blending in with the divine uh, feminine force. Then you get the traction to, to expand and to get changes in your life. That makes so sense. And speaking of uh, the masculine and feminine uh, force, can you share a little bit about why you're so passionate about it? And we, we can actually start by defining what is the masculine uh, force and the masculine or the feminine force? And some uh, call it the feminine power and the masculine power. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I the the feminine force is like you know the Chinese symbol with yin and yang that flows beautifully in, in with each other. Uh, it's it's different treats. It's actually different energies coming out of qi, which is the life force that comes out of Tao. The consciousness field of everything. So Tao, Qi, and then Yin and Yang, feminine and masculine force, which are the two creational life forces. And they have different treats. And when you're light, when you are in beautiful inner balance, these energies and these treats, which is way of living, when they are balanced, when they are both present in your life you will experience a degree of inner balance. So it's uh, where the the masculine force is about doing, the feminine force is about being. Where, um, so it's being active or passive. It's like you're talking or you're listening. That's the masculine and the feminine. So it's a burning energy and be on it, being masculine, uh, the, the masculine energy or relaxing resting rejuvenating is the feminine force so it's the it's the willpower and it's the heart power yeah can you speak a little bit about why you feel this topic is so important at this time yeah thanks for asking about that Janika. well we are living in times of huge changes for each and one of us and for humanity and for gaia our home and for 
many, 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 many years, the indigenous people have talked about the great awakening. And this is where we are now. And we, our opportunity is to awaken from the sleep where we believe that fear and worry and scarcity, there's not enough, we have to fight. That consciousness level is fading out. Gaia is doing her ascension process up to from 3D, so-called, to 5D. And every human being is given the opportunity to, to ascend together with Gaia, which is a fabulous happening uh, in the universe. It's, it said it hasn't happened before, that the, the, the beings for us, humanity, that lives with this planet is ascending together because normally it's quite catalytic um, when this ascension process has happened for a, when these ascension processes happen for a planet. So what it takes of us then is to awaken to that there is a huge imbalance in the masculine and feminine force. Our world has become so masculine power driven so that the shadow side of the masculine is running the games. And that means, the shadow side means it's an ego driven, it's, it's a competition driven. That's funny to say for me, competition, but I'm all about evolving, not really competition. Uh, competing is only a place where you get to measure yourself towards other, but it's all about how you develop your skills and evolve yourself. So that, that said, so the period we're living in is about being able to set the world more on hold, decide if you want to place your consciousness on the fear mongering in the news, where the headlines are big about all the crisis and the catastrophic things going on. We're feeding our consciousness constantly when we look at this um, with, with, with these low vibrational energies, which actually just keep, on, keep our world being in that frequency, in that state. We are in a precious moment in time where we are able to now consciously choose if you want to live our life in a different way. And that, how do we do that? That is by saying we need balance. We need, Gaia needs balance. Every human being needs the balance. And in this way, we can balance humanity by bringing the divine feminine force into our lives. That's the only way to bring balance. And by this, we move up to 5D Earth because that is a balanced way of living. It's a place where we sense our way forward. We doesn't have to plan and fight and strive because there is abundance, there is enough. We don't have to do all the stuff we do with our clothing and homes and injections and thing because we don't feel worthy or good enough. We are beautiful as we are. We are uh, God-given creatures. And, and, and realizing, a part of this is also realizing then the self-worth, the safe love, self-love, uh, self-respect, healthy boundaries that is possible to create and to move into when we allow the feminine force into our life. Very exciting. And in the masterclass, you go even deeper, you know, much deeper about these forces and these different traits. And uh, also you have some meditations and a handout explaining also the shadow side of the feminine and the masculine. Um, could you share a little bit about uh, if people are wondering what about like, okay, so how do I open up more uh, to this feminine force? Uh, does it have to do with uh, doing some practices or uh, is it something I have to uh, look into myself and, and see, uh, uh, look at these different uh, qualities of the feminine if I suppress my feminine sides or feminine power or force forces? Mm -hmm. uh, because the way I worked with it for a couple of years ago when I was very into this was that I looked at some um, 
uh, qualities of the feminine, which I had been judging within myself. Uh, a classic example is vulnerability, for, for instance, uh, or, or being afraid of being weak, for instance, or uh, resting too much. And that's a classic uh, example. Uh, so I needed to look at that. Why was I judging that within myself? Well, yes, in my family, it was very looked upon, high upon, uh, working a lot, working very hard, using every five minutes you got to, to fill it in with something. And so rest, what was rest? Uh, so I looked into that and I sort of tried to balance more and, and not judge as much my feminine qualities, but really opening up to them. Uh, but what about you? Uh, do you have any thoughts about uh, how we can like today, some suggestions right now where we can start? Yeah. Oh, there are so many topics. It's broad, and I'm covering this very deeply in my book, The Inside of the Metal, that's coming this fall, in Norwegian to be translated. <clears throat> but what is important to, to realize is that these are this life-changing, actually. It's about changing way of living, lifestyle, if you really want to go into it. And, and, and in a way, I said, yes, go for it. Why, like, going halfway? You won't get there. Uh, so what find people that are on this evolutionary journey as you are, because the programming and the conditioning, as you said, from your childhood, what you grew up in and, and, and these thought patterns that we have to meet, how we are conditioned to think that life has to be, it's to, to, uh, to free ourselves from those thought patterns is important. And, and by that, it might be that some people in your life will kind of fade away because they don't they want to remain in that way of living and then it's really hard to find your new way of living so so wanting to find hey that's what i i asked the universe <laughs> i need help with this please help me send me the persons that will be great for my next steps okay so so find these people and and then there is about um Allowing the feminine force into your life is its two part. Discovering, and which we, which we cover in the masterclass, more about the treats of the, the masculine force and, and the feminine force. We go more di deeply into it. And you will see that, hmm, this is where I need to do some changes. Um, because here I'm really there, um, a lot of masculine force. So when you, uh, when you go for those changes, uh, a big part of it is placing the world much more on hold because you, you have to slow down and the feminine force is about slowing down. And um, so that, that is a big part of it. And, and then to, to also say, I want to be stronger connect, connected with my feelings, with my emotions. That's, that, that is the feminine force. So by just accessing, how do I really feel? Ah, smelling when you cook food. What do you, what does it smell? Smell taste like if you're out in nature. Use your senses, because what you need to to really access the big shift is to access the energy senses as well, where intuition is a part of it. To find this inner guiding, because when you are being inner guided um, from your higher self and what else is guiding you? The language of this guiding is the emotions. And in order to hear, to, to hear those emotions, those impulses you get, if, if it's whether hearing or just a sensing thing, it's like, no, I shouldn't go there. Mm, I'm going to say no to that. Or so, so no would feel like a contraction. If you're, I'm, I wonder if I want, should I study that? Do I go in for that course? Do I say yes to that job? Or whatever you have in question. If you, your first impulse, if you get the yes, it's like an expansion. Then it's your higher self, your inner being talking to you by that emotional uh, signal. So to, to connect with your senses uh, and emotions, because that's when you can start the dialogue, the conscious inner dialogue, as I call it. 
where you will get the messages, not from the newspapers, not, uh, you know, what could be hidden in the newspapers, but, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a much deeper connection that allows for this beautiful inner guiding that allows for faith and trust moving into your life because you, you, you get the impressions from inside of you. And somehow this is just, you just know that it's right. It's an inner knowing, an inner sensing, and you will never go wrong when you follow this guiding. And by this, you move away from a life where worry, fear, I have to control and get hold of everything. That's the masculine shadow side that believes it has to know everything. No, we don't, because we can walk with the feminine activated within us. And that's when we walk through the heart with the guiding step by step. And this is a co-creational, beautiful way of living. Quite different than the world we are actually leaving behind. So if you want to be on the train, <laughs> you open up for this inner world of energies, consciousness, and the divine feminine, allowing that into our life again. It's the only way we can balance this beautiful world we're living in. It's the only way humanity can balance and find peace, prosperity, no more wars, and where humanity is, every human counts. The human worth is all. It's really inspiring to do that. And uh, it's not about, you know, that the feminine should take over the masculine. Uh, and that's so important to just mention because sometimes Very important. it seems like people misunderstand that. And also that the masculine is uh, when it, it is the healthy masculine. We need that as well. Oh, so yes. could you please like uh, distinguish between the shadow sides of the masculine and feminine and the healthy side of it? So we just become aware of what is what. Yeah, that is a very important thing to address, Janneke. Because, you know, many fear, I experienced in the top sport where the masculine power is and likes to be strong and kind of afraid of the power of a, of, a, of a woman or it's it's not about I say masculine energies are power whereas feminine energies are force and the beautiful side of okay uh, rewind a little bit when this is in beautiful harmony what to do what to consider what to create comes through the heart and the feminine. And this can never be brought into reality without the masculine. But so when, when the masculine force is the servant of the divine, uh, not for competing or anything, but to co-create, that's the beauty of it. So when we follow the heart, when we follow what is nurturing, compassion, unconditional love, for all that is. And we put the masculine, beautiful creational capacities into this, which is in every human being, both of these forces is our God-given capacity and right and ability to have within us. That's when we create this beautiful life and way of living. So what happened on the shadow side is as we grow up, we lose connection with this heart, with the intuition, with the playfulness, with the wandering, with the curiosity, with fantasy, with dreaming, which all are expressions of the feminine force. And it's how we access the quantum field, uh, our guides that connects with us to help us find the way. It's we, we walk astray from this heart connection, we, from the portal that the heart is through the pineal gland. And, up. and so the shadow sides comes in place, in play, where I say we're looking for love, not inside of us, but outside of us. And then the game for being that worth, being that valued, being respected, being acknowledged starts because we don't do it ourselves. We don't fill our own cup. We run out in the world to have it filled from others. Mm -hmm. And that's when the shadow sides of both yin 
and young gets to be on in the big play. Fascinating. Yeah. So for instance, in the with the masculine power, it can be used for uh wanting more, wanting um uh wanting power over over other people instead of using your uh, masculine drive to something positive, something that is sustainable and uh of service for, for others, then it's like misused in a way. That's yeah, so kind of the masculine force can't really be used for the for the good and the benefit unless it is really connected with the heart. Right. right. It, mm. it will be power race. And that is well pretty much what we see out there in the I see a lot of people who want the life to be different to see that we need a change here and I can say there is only one thing that is really guiding you if you are doing choices out of fear out of scarcity and anxiety you are choosing from your shadow side from all the programming that you have to control things, that you need to know how to be. And may I say that the vaccination passports, how we are, how we are, we, we didn't get to see our old ones. Uh, we don't get to hug, recovering our faces with the smiles and our expressions. We have to ask ourselves if, if, if these are coming from divine, unconditional love, or is it coming from a shadow side of the masculine? I see conditional love. I see control mechanisms. I see, and I said the root of it is how you find the answer. Is it, by, is, is it based in fear? You got the answer. It was really strange because I was just thinking about the vaccine right now. <laughs> and he started speaking about it. <laughs> what a synchronicity. Um, and think, it's not yeah. only about the vaccines, I would like to say, because it gets a lot of focus. But we have to ask ourselves, the way our govern governments have all over, have told us to, like, our old parents have been dying alone. Mm. Not, not feeling the warmth of your hug and, and the energy of your presence. Uh, a lot of sick people have not been treated at the hospitals because they had to be kept open for something else. A lot of people are much, much more scared now than one and a half year ago. And when, when what is going on is creating more and more fear, then there's, to me, it says it's the wrong direction. There is something not in divine balance here. And the question I think each and one of us has to ask ourselves is, what is, re what is it really to be human? And what kind of life do I want to live? Because we have seen a lot of examples of that the last 18 months now. Yeah, these are big questions. It's, it's not easy when there's so much pressure from society mm -hmm. uh, and we want to make our own individual decisions, but we feel it's difficult because of the pressure and you don't want to, you know, catch it yourself and then uh, give others uh, the, the uh, mm -hmm. corona. And so there's many questions here. Uh, but I think there is a deeper meaning behind this. I think it's part of the awakening. And I think also that our um, isolation from each other also was a, a possibility to go within and to ask ourselves, what do I really want in life? Uh, so we're really, it seems like we're really forced to ask ourselves questions like, what do I stand for? What do I want? Yes. Uh, how do I want to live? And you know, that's again how life is a good teacher whatever happens in your life so just go to your personal life you know that when when everything is good and fine it's it's great but then something shit happens and it's like you know it's like the pendle and then it's more and more shit and you're more and more tired and it's more and at some point i've been there a few times i was like i can't live this way anymore so the question is how rough does it have to get 
before I say, it can't be like this. So how should it be then? And start to, that's to, to return into this great balance. And learning about the divine feminine and masculine force is crucial for the consciousness shift that you may experience by, by realizing that, I, that you are so much more than you were ever told. And you have so much, so many more innate powers and resources, which you will discover when you go into balancing this feminine and masculine force within yourself. I promise you. That will change the world. Yes, definitely. And thank you so much for addressing this in your work uh, through that and making a masterclass. And I'm, I'm so honored and excited that we can offer this on our platform. And for everybody listening, you can access this masterclass in the Wisdom from North membership. I'll leave the link below. Uh, you don't want to miss this. Uh, and at the end, through that, is there anything else you would like to share with us today? Ooh, we've covered a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I would just like to add to everyone seeing this. You are so much more than you ever were told. And if you decide that you want changes for the positive and better in your life and search for it and go for it, that's why you're here too. It can only get better. And together we create miracles. Thank you for watching and thank you, Janneke, for what you're doing. This is really a part of your platform and the membership is so valuable for the shift we're in. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. And thank you, everybody who has been watching today. Uh, much light from Norway and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.